Hi, my name is Jessica, and today I am going to be sharing my ostomy process for the takedown and then what the recovery has been like for uh, just a little bit more than a month. So I'm going to do another video that talks about my process that led to getting an ileostomy. I think it would just be too long to put it in this video and that is kind of a separate interest in um, the people looking for uh, other people who've had an ileostomy takedown. And this really what inspired me to make this video is before my ileostomy takedown, I wanted to learn more about other people's experiences when I was looking online for what to expect. Everything was so vague. It was like within, you know, one to six months, you might have this, it could take this long for this, or you might experience that. And it was just nice to see other people's experiences to see what I might be experiencing. And there's a lot of variability with anything like this. And I think it also has other factors that go into it, like maybe how much of your colon, if you had a colon resection or a bowel resection, how much was resected and how long you had your ileostomy. So I think, um, you know, just because of what the experience that I had doesn't mean that'll be the same experience for everybody else. Uh, that being said, um, when I was watching some of the videos, I didn't see as many people touching on the topics that I was hoping to get more information on. Um, I saw a couple of videos that were still really helpful, and I will put them in the comments for anyone else who's looking for those. Uh, I just didn't see a whole lot of information on YouTube um, in general that I was looking for. So I'm hoping I'll share my experience and touch on those things that I was looking for, and hopefully that will help. Uh, so I had a, um, the long story short of why I had an ileostomy is complications after I had a baby this summer. So I know it seemed like a lot of people have ileostomy. The main reason that I saw that people have ileostomies is related to um, colon cancer. But in my case, I had a large bowel obstruction after my C-section and after the bowel resection, um, I ended up with a, with an ileostomy while my um, while my colon healed after the resection, and I had my ileostomy for not very long, which I'm you know thankful for. It was about seven weeks that I had my ileostomy, and I know it's nothing compared to a lot of people, but seven weeks felt like a very long time for me. And while I was very excited to have my ileostomy taken down, I just didn't really know what to expect after. So, uh, so start with the preparation process for the ileostomy. Um, I was very lucky that you know I was having I had a couple of follow up appointments after my surgery with our with my surgery clinic, and they scheduled a, a surgery date, but I had to have a um, an appointment a week before to make sure that everything looked good. I was healing. And part of the pre-op appointment process was to have a scope of my intestine. And that was before the appointment. So beforehand, uh, the, an important factor is making sure that you're well hydrated. Uh, I know for my ileostomy, I had so much liquid output. Um, I have really had a hard time getting the right consistency, that like pudding consistency they want you to have. Uh, I just had a really hard time getting there, even with fiber bars and eating the foods they tell you to eat. Uh, I was just losing so much liquid. So I was trying to drink a lot of liquid to balance it out. So it's really important to stay hydrated. Um, luckily, I, I had a I had a stomach bug for about a week and I couldn't really eat or drink very well. So that sent me back a little bit earlier on, but I was able to keep drinking fluids and I, I was doing pretty good in that regard. Um, so I had my, my colostomy, or sorry, my scope, and I called ahead because I didn't get a lot of instructions about it. And I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything I was supposed to do ahead of time because I did not want to do anything to push my, my surgery back, my takedown. So I called and they said, there's nothing special I needed to do, just show up. And so I got there and one thing that no one had told me and I didn't know is that um, at least for me, my, my scope 
wasn't through my rectum. Um, I knew that the scope is to look, go in there and make sure everything was well healed. So I guess I just thought it would just be a regular like colonoscopy uh, series that it was just in through the rectum and it was through the ileostomy. And um, when they got there, they asked if I brought extra uh, supplies like a pouch and everything you need to do a dressing change. And I sure did not um, because nobody told me. So, uh, so what they did is they emptied my pouch and then they um, put the tubing through the bottom of the pouch and into the ostomy. And my scope lasted about an hour. And I would say for me, it was pretty painful. Um, they don't give you anything or they didn't give me anything. And I asked if they would be, and they said, no, um, they said that, you know, some people tolerate the procedure just fine or most people. And, you know, other times it's, um, not as comfortable. And for me, what I mostly experienced was a lot of stomach cramping. And that was really painful for me. Um, really the whole time when they had told me, um, while I was waiting for the, the surgeon who was, uh, coming in to do it, um, I had brought some pain medications with me just in case, because I knew there was a potential that, um, they wouldn't give me anything. And I still had some, um, pain medications from my surgery and had still been taking them off and on because I was still in that recovery period for my surgery. So I had taken it and I will be honest, it didn't even help. So I don't think it made much of a difference. Uh, maybe for right after when things had calmed down, but it didn't help for me. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't the worst pain I've ever been in, but it was certainly painful and just something that I wanted the, the take down so bad. I, I, I really would have gone through anything just to, you know, get through it. So, uh, so what they did is they put in the scope and then they put some contrast in and what they're looking for is to make sure that um, the contrast they put in higher in your, in your ostomy will go down to your rectum. And, uh, it takes a little bit, or it took a little bit for me. And then you, uh, some of it might leak out, especially depending on the strength of your muscles in your rectum. Um, but for me, I mostly passed it right after. Um, so all good signs. And after that, and they made sure there's like um, I think they, they checked something too at first when they first went in. I think it's just to make sure that there's no initial leaking at the ostomy site either. So all good things. Um, I will say too, when I was looking up research for my ostomy takedown, I found these instructions somewhere um, from some medical facility um, saying that in order to, you can prep for your bowel or for your, um, for your ostomy takedown. And they listed one exercise, which was these Kegel exercises for your rectum. So you would squeeze your rectum muscles and hold it for 10 seconds and then release for 10 seconds and then constrict them again for 10 seconds and then release them again for 10 seconds. And you do um, like one um, like constrict and release uh, cycle 10 times. And you can do that. I think it was four times a day. Uh, you can double check that too, but that's something I was doing, but I did notice, uh, if I did it after I ate or, um, if I was having some output, it seemed to like put a little bit more pressure on, uh, output for me. But, uh, but again, I was still, I still had some pain as I was or around my office say all the way up until my takedown. So I think having done some, exercises to get my, and to build up the muscle again from, um, or in my, my rectal area, I think was really helpful as part of my, um, process. I also, uh, was working with a pelvic floor physical therapist, which is something that you can do while, um, working towards your ileostomy takedown and something I think worthwhile in mentioning to your surgeon and see if that would be beneficial because it's kind of the same thing of, working on building up those muscles so that when you have your ostomy reversed, uh, your recovery is much better than it probably could be. Um, so you can start gaining on using those muscles beforehand. Uh, I was working with a pelvic floor therapist, which I had so much to work on, um, but because I uh, had other things to work on and I was in such kind of a fragile shape, at that point, we didn't, we didn't do a whole lot. 
um, for the ostomy takedown exercises, but I would definitely look at um, looking into that beforehand, especially if you have some time until your ostomy takedown. So fast forward, um, I have my, my um, takedown uh, colonoscopy pre-op, and then I have my appointment in which uh, my surgeon kind of talked about the process that the surgery would be about 45 minutes uh, because like I said, they had already reconnected my, my colon before and it had time to um, reduce in swelling and you know, there are no concerns for leakages. Uh, she said that they cut around the area, the scan around the area um, of your stoma and they staple the holes and then they kind of just push your intestine right back down. And it sounds like there's some variety on how they manage that new hole in your abdomen. I, some of the videos I had seen, they talked about stapling the area. Um, my surgeon had mentioned that in stapling it, it kind of left some dog ear um, looks. So it's, it wasn't very aesthetically pleasing if you have it stapled. I'm not certain how true that is. Uh, she had mentioned that I would probably have some wound packing. Uh, it wasn't clear if it would be during or after I left the hospital. I know one of the videos I saw, they had some packing while they were in the hospital and they just took it out and let it close on its own um, before they discharged. So, so I thought I would have some wound packing when I had mine and um, that you'd be in the hospital for a couple of days, mostly for pain control and to make sure that you have a bowel movement before you leave. So, um, so that was great. Uh, no concerns going in for the appointment or go after the appointment and then had to wait the week. It was, um, gosh, those final days counting down to my, uh, to my surgery was great. I, I was very nervous, which if you, when I talk about my, my process, I had a very, I had a long hospitalization and I it was scared going into the hospital again. And any surgery is scary and has its risks. But um, that when I was thinking about my, you know, like this is my last, pouch change. There's nothing like that moment. It was just so, such a relief and, uh, I couldn't wait to be done with it. And I, you know, having the skin breakdown around my ostomy and I, yeah, yeah. But you probably know all that if you're watching this video, uh, before the surgery, I had some cleanse that you're supposed to do in the shower the day before and the night of, um, with my ostomy pouch, I did everything, but I kept the ostomy pouch on the day before because I didn't want to keep changing the pouch. Um, and so the morning of is when I took off the pouch for my shower, cleaned the area really well too with the, the cleanse. And then I put on the new pouch right before, uh, which of course you're fasting before surgery. So I didn't have a lot of my, um, a lot of output before my surgery. Um, surgery, what expected as expected, you know, um, I had mine really early in the morning. And so I, you know, I spent longer time in recovery waiting for bed to open up than I think I did in the OR, which was probably good. Uh, when I got to the room afterwards, I felt so good, especially because I had had so much pain beforehand with my other issues, um, kind of recovering from um, the X lap that I had and just having a baby. Um, and it, before I wasn't really walking really well because of everything. So, but after the surgery, I felt so great and I was walking better than I had since my C-section. And before all of this, I was, you know, hundred percent healthy and fine. So it was such a great moment. And uh, I felt like I didn't need any pain medications. And then my surgeon checked on me um, in the afternoon and she had told me that uh, they do some I don't remember what she said. I think it's something topical or they inject some kind of um, something in for or in around your ostomy site um, where that our new wound is for pain control. So the reason I was feeling so good is because they had they had to put something on. So uh, she had recommended to not get behind in my pain medication because I had thought I didn't need it and I wasn't taking it. So FYI, if you are feeling really good after, you will not continue to feel that way. And I think for me, um, for what they use for me, it lasted like 12 hours total. So, um, just like any, anything, it's, you know, important to stay ahead of your pain curve. So, so I definitely started feeling it later that night. I was glad I was taking my pain medication because it was 
definitely sore and painful. And then um, they kept asking, you know, that day and then the, the next day, you know, if I was having any uh, gas yet and if I had a bowel movement yet. And I was so worried because I didn't have it um, the first, like the day of the surgery or the next day. And I had started off with an ileus, which is when your, your colon is kind of shocked into not working. So I was terrified that I had another ileus because it is still a surgery, um, you know, with some of the pain medications like the lauded, uh, that can cause constipation, which is not what you want to have. And so I was, you know, taking or trying to not to take the Dilaudid, but it was so painful that there were a couple times where I did take it. So it was really having to try not to take any pain medication that, you know, would cause that, um, but try not to be in too much pain, which is a really hard balance. Um, another thing is that the, I, you know, I had heard this during my initial surgery, but no one had mentioned it the second time, my um, surgery to, for the takedown, is that gum and some, um, I, and I think like hard candies, but in particular gum is the only evidence-based um, treatment that gets your colon working and get your gastric juices working to move things along your colon. So walking, they say is really good. And I believe that, but, um, but actually when they've done research, it's gum that gets things moving. So I was trying to chew gum all the time. <laughs> um, so you start off with like a liquid diet again, and then you have your gum or I had gum, i um, trying to get things moving. And then it was actually the night, the second the day, second day, like, well, I guess, so it's day zero, I guess, being surgery day. And then the day one, um, I got all day, but it was the, the late night of day one, uh, where I had stopped. I had, I think I had had the, the Dilata I was taking out of my system by then too. I started feeling like these rumbles in my stomach, it felt like a, almost sounded like a thunderstorm in my stomach. And, uh, I started passing gas and then I was suddenly passing a lot of gas. And then, um, so I knew things were moving and that was such a great sign, such a relief. And then the next morning I had a little bit of a bowel movement and then um, they told me I could discharge that day. And um, yeah, I, I had had a couple more bowel movements in there. And when I say bowel movements, it's not what you had before. It is um, very loose. I, I mean, it's, uh, call it what it is, it's just diarrhea. and you, or at least I didn't have, you don't have like a lot of notice. It's like, you're just sitting there minding your own business. And suddenly your body is like, I have to go to the bathroom right now. And so you rush to the bathroom and get there. And it's not fun at first. Um, and then, uh, so for my for my wound, they were just doing dressing changes at the time. So they just had gauze and tape over it. And I was so sensitive when they tried to touch the area that my body just like jumped like a mile off the, off the bed. Um, so the second day I, I asked if I could just do it, which is good experience too, just to practice my dressing change while they're all watching me too. Um, but I didn't have any packing like they thought I would. Uh, my surgeon said that my uh, subcutaneous tissue is already starting to close in the OR right after they did it. So they went ahead and they just stitched the, um, like the deeper part of my skin. So like the subcutaneous part of my skin, they stitched that a little bit. So then the top of it was going to close. So it's imagine kind of like a V um, where they like stitched it and then um, letting my wound heal on its own. So luckily no staples, no, um, no packing for me. Um, and just um, those stitches, which are, are uh, dissolvable stitches. And um, that was kind of the course of my hospitalization. I went home, I was very, oh, and then they try to get you to walk a bunch, which again is so important just with, you know, being in the hospital too. I went home, I was definitely not feeling great. I kind of want to rest at home next to a bathroom and I definitely was in pain and I just laid in bed uh, for the most part for those first couple of days after staying really close to the bathroom. 
uh, you restart the diet that you were like, at least pretty close to what I was on when I got my ostomy, uh, the low residue diet. So really, I haven't really been off the diet since I had the surgery and then I had the ostomy take down. So, um, so I think what's helpful too is the low residue diet will decrease how often you're having to go to the bathroom as well. And, you know, I didn't have much of an appetite. And if you don't, you know, if you like skip a meal or if you maybe eat lighter too, um, it's going to ease the burden on your bowels and having to go to the bathroom as often. So, um, so for example, like skipping breakfast instead of just having like a lunch, uh, which maybe isn't ideal, but um, in that recovery process, at least for me, it was really nice. I also started taking, um, well, I still had some prenatal vitamins. So I started taking that again, but I think it's really, um, might be a good idea and something worth talking to your doctor about too, about taking multivitamins or something um, after, especially the low residue diet doesn't have a lot, you can't have like cooked or can't have, sorry, raw vegetables. And I just wasn't eating a ton. So I think that might be helpful too in the healing process, you know, personal opinion, but um, might be worth mentioning. So taking those. Um, and I was really afraid because I had seen some of these videos that like, you know, particularly this one person was at like at their peak had 17 bowel movements in a day, talked about how painful it was. Um, and so, I didn't have it nearly as bad. Um, so I, I wrote, I kept a log of my bowel movements because I thought it'd be nice to see if like there's a pattern or if I could feel like things were getting worse or better. So I just in my notes app and my phone just kept track of every day to this day. Um, so I say for the first week, um, I had at least four bowel movements a day, the most being eight. Uh, and then the day that I had eight, I had um, something or I had spicy food, which you're not supposed to have. So I regretted that. <laughs> I literally had twice as much as I, I did the day before. And again, it's entirely diarrhea. It doesn't feel good coming out. It's somewhat painful. It's kind of like a, like a hot kind of burning sensation at first. And so uh, for me, I just kind of sat there and waited for that pain to kind of pass. Uh, not that it took too long, a couple minutes. Um, for people who have a lot of bowel movements and, you know, are constantly having to go to the bathroom, you know, whatever, um, they say you can have, uh, or you should, could use baby wipes to ease some of that pain and make it more comfortable, uh, less burning. And then um, using the same cream that they use for babies, which I happen to have laying around like Aquaphor, Desitin. Um, I, I didn't go often enough to where I use those, but I certainly kept them on hand. And then um, I'd also heard that you could have some leakage at night when your body relaxes and your rectal muscles relax. Um, I didn't have that, but I had some peace of mind wearing, um, and you can wear different things like just putting on like a pad or a diaper. The first couple of days, especially if you're not really close to the bathroom or if you're gonna try to go outside um, or just at night and worrying about having an accident or something leaking out, um, you could always lay on a towel or a couple of towels too. I, you don't, I, I wouldn't wanna soil my bed um, and clothes could be washed, but um, just being mindful that that could happen. But fortunately for me, I didn't have that. And again, I think because of I only had seven weeks of my ostomy um, and I've been doing these, these exercises for several weeks leading up to, I think really put me in a good position um, where I just didn't, I didn't have that. Um, so the, the first week, like I said, the most I had was eight, but the least I had was four. Uh, the second week um, was a bit better, depended on the day, but it's, it's, as soon as I had the second week, my, I most commonly had up to three bowel movements a day. Um, I, there were a couple of times I only had two and the worst one day I had was six. So I'm gonna guess I probably ate something I shouldn't have um, that made me go more that day. Week three was very similar. One day I only had one bowel movement. Um, at the most I had four. 
And then this last week, um, at the beginning of the week, I had my first, um, I had one day where I didn't have any bowel movements. And then the next day when I went to the bathroom, I had um, an actually like formed stool. Um, it, I kind of want to go into details about, you know, poop, but it, yeah, it was like the, it was like before almost, um, it was not loose. It wasn't liquidy. It was formed. And, um, and I've had another day this week where I didn't have, I didn't have any bowel movements. The most I've had is three this week and it's been less liquidy than before, but it's still not formed. It's kind of hard to describe and I really don't want to go into it in detail, but it's just, yeah, it's just kind of like, um, a little more solid. It's not as painful to pass, which I think is really important, but I'm still having that urgency where I have to go to the bathroom right now. Um, and I don't have a lot of time to get there a lot of times. So, um, and then, and again, I'm about a week and two days out for my, uh, takedown. So about a, a month from being discharged from the hospital. So I would definitely say it's a lot better than it was, but still have some ways to go and being mindful of my diet has really helped. And I'm trying to keep a log of, um, different food that I can eat that doesn't cause me to have to jump up and go to the bathroom versus foods that do. And these days, um, I, what I found is if I do eat something that does make me need to go to the bathroom, um, then it is more of that like diarrhea consistency. And then I have to go like two more times, like shortly after, like maybe an hour apart. And then once I get through that, then I'm fine for the rest of the day. But, but it's like a series, like once I do it, then I'm, I'm in and out of the bathroom. So yeah, again, I, I think it's keeping a log of especially the food you eat and how it affects you is really a good idea. I wish I had started that earlier. So I, I had a better sense because now I'm a month out and um, like my FMLA paperwork was like two to six weeks of time off. Um, and as I'm getting back into life, I am trying to be mindful of foods to eat when I'm out so that I am um, not having um, bathroom issues. And um, it's hard to, I you know, back, you know, when you're on the ostomy, you, can, you have fiber bars and um, you're taking a modium, but they're, they tell you not to take that on the other side. But I recently had an appointment and was asking about what can I do to kind of thicken up my stool or to try to get things going again. And they said, you know, I could try the fiber bars again or try eating some like fiber-based cereal to see if that helps. Um, drinking water is also good, but I just haven't quite hit my stride yet. But again, it is, it is definitely better. And they, um, they said it can take up to six months until your, your body finds its new pattern. You know, your, your um, intestine, when you're not, that part of your intestine that you're not using with the ostomy, it atrophies while you're not using it. It's not getting the nutrients in that area. So it just kind of withers a bit, withers away. And so you're rebuilding those muscles and they're, I mean, it's kind of reminds me of my baby who's also having a lot of liquid stools because his body is learning how to work and his intestine area is also trying to, you know, figure out how to do form stools. So I think we're having these like parallel experiences where our GI system is learning how to, you know, um, appropriately go to the bathroom and um, make stool. <laughs> so uh, so it takes time and I think it's important to give yourself grace. I, you know, I had some bad moments and I think all of this is a journey, but I, I really think it, it has been getting better. And, you know, the first week and maybe even two weeks, it was not a fun time. And I, you know, could feel maybe down on myself. Um, I, I had a lot of those feelings where I was just like, you know, why me or why am I going through this? But um, each day gets a little bit better. And, you know, I'm so glad that things have gotten better, um, for my wound care. I'm still doing the, um, I have, so that I have got Vaseline gauze that I put over the wound and then I do regular gauze over it and then taping around it. Um, which is been fine. I do it once a day and it's been healing really well. And, um, they tell you to shower with it open 
so I've already struggled with showering with my ostomy, like I thought the pouch. So I just thought it was so gross to have my intestine like out hitting the water. And so, but of course it was the easiest way to clean it. So, and like give your skin a break around it. So that was, that was already a lot. And then I didn't want to be, I had such a fear of being in pain. And I thought having my wound exposed and having water hit it, I was afraid of the pain. And so I didn't shower for two weeks with it exposed. I wrapped it and that was probably a mistake because it start. I mean, it looks, it looks fine, but it just kind of started looking kind of creamy on top. So finally I did shower with it and it, it wasn't painful at all. And it actually, so it keeps like it clean. It's rinsing off some of the, the stuff from the Vaseline that sits on it. Um, and yeah, it like lowers your chance of infection because that soap and water is, is running over it. So, you know, something I probably should have been doing earlier on, but I don't think it really set me back too much. And so now it's looking really great. I can see some of like one of my stitches coming through my wound, uh, which is fine. My wound in and of itself was um, about three inches long and it was kind of like um, longer than I kind of thought it'd be like a more of a circle because, you know, that's what my ostomy looks like, but it was just more of a line. And so, um, you kind of see it filling in from the bottom up. And when I just had my last appointment on Friday, uh, they said that they think in another two weeks, it'll be totally closed. So, so about a month and a half for it to, um, to maybe heal. And in my next video, I'll put in some pictures too, because I was also interested in what did people's stomachs look like after with the egg slap incision, and then also my, uh, or with the ostomy incision. So I'll, I'll have more of that. Um, I'll do maybe another update video uh, two months out, and then I'll do another video of um, um, kind of like what led to my ostomy situation and kind of my process in the hospital, um, just in case there, I, like I said, I didn't see a lot of situations like mine and the um, OB team that I had, um, only one of the OBs had um, ever seen a case like mine, um, having a large bowel obstruction after a C-section. Um, and she had retired shortly after, like within two weeks after everything had happened. But for the most part, it was just a very rare situation. Um, and I just didn't really see anyone that had an experience like mine. But of course, there are different reasons for why people can have a, a large bowel obstruction and then also have an ileostomy. So, uh, so I'll put that out there in case it's helpful for anyone else who maybe finds this. Um, I think those are all the things that I was kind of looking at or the questions I had had but when I was looking into um, preparing for my ileostomy takedown. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope that if you're watching this and you have some, you know, your ileostomy reversal coming up, I hope it, I know it'll go well. Um, you know, you, there are things you could do to help prepare for it and take some control over the situation, I think, by by doing these exercises and talking to your surgeon about, you know, nutrition and vitamins and um, pelvic floor physical therapy or doing even the Kegels at home, um, things that you could do to, to prepare yourself, I think is really great. And, um, you know, it's, we, you get through it and we were getting, we got through the first, the, having the ileostomy put in and then we'll get through the, the ileostomy coming down. So, uh, so best of luck if you are going through that. And I uh, won't say that I'm going to carefully watch these comments because this is not a channel that I'm really into. I just kind of made this um, channel just for these couple videos, but I will check them every once in a while. I hope that um, that everything does go well for you for are going through it. But thanks for watching. Um, best of luck with your surgery.